Hello everyone, this is Counter Yolo, bringing you another video talking about survivability in Star Trek Online. And today I'll be going over what, in my opinion at least, are the, are the strongest survival consoles that currently exist inside of the game. Now this did this definitely took me a very long time to make, so please keep that in mind. There, there are probably a couple of mistakes that I made throughout this PowerPoint. Um, but overall, um, when I was going through all these different consoles, there's four different categories that I, that I considered. Um, there is passive consoles, which basically just have passive traits on them and really nothing else. Um, kind of a subset of those is power consoles or consoles that added additional power in some way so that you're able to use eight beam weapons. Um, and then I, then I had two versions of clicky consoles. Consoles that that really urge enemies to attack you. And then consoles that you're able to that basically add in an additional ability just to allow you to survive a little bit better. Um, for those of you that are watching this video that um, are not tanks, um, really just sections one and sections and section four are going to be the ones that you really want to watch. Sections two and three are a lot more for, for tanks than for everyone else. However, if, if you're going for an eight um, energy weapon type of build, the power console section might also be valuable to you as well. At the very end, I'll give you a very brief example budget level group of, of um, consoles. Um, that you can earn through stories and events based upon the stuff in these four categories. So, um, oh yeah, and, and like normal, of course, in the description will be the time links for all these different stuff inside of the video. So this first section is passive consoles. Now, for these, there are, there are six of them that I found fairly noteworthy to kind of include. There were definitely a uh, lot of other ones inside the game, but these are only ones that really stuck out in my mind as ones that as a tank that I would actually consider using instead of other ones that are from ships or, or earnable inside the game. So the number six here is Shield Absorber Frequency Generator. Um, this is from the Tier 3 Valdor Heavy Warbird. It's really nice you're able to put those on all Rum the Warbirds inside of the game. Um, the, um, the set two and three for this is kind of weird because you have lots of different consoles for different ships and things, so that's kind of weird. But um, the strength of this is that you basically get an additional passive shield Teely proc for all of your energy weapons. Um, also notice that there are a couple of um, specific ships that you can have a two and three set bonus that if you add one of those consoles with this on those particular ships, you get a 25% power cost reduction, which is good enough to um, fire eight beams at once inside the game. So... If you go for those particular ships with this console, uh, you'll be doing super well and won't even need to consider the second category in, in this um, survivability um, console list. So, so number five is sustained radiant field. Um, this one is from Iconi Reputation Tier 1. Um, it's really just a pretty generalized amount for stuff that's pretty good for tanks. You get a 20% bonus to all of your hull and shield heals, and then you get a 10% passive all, all damage, all, all weapon damage boost anyway. Um, I have this a little bit lower just because the, the, the two and three set bonus for the um, for the Iconi stuff is is not really that great for you. So this is this is a bit lower. Number four is the Taka Kinetic Converter. Um, this is one of the lobby consoles that a lot of DPS guys are gonna say, this is absolutely must have, you have to have this thing. Eh, I mean like, yeah, sure, for my high end stuff I'm going to use this. Well, kind of use this. Uh, there's, there's actually a different console which I use now instead of this one. Um, but um, but anyway, um, it, it's, it's still a solid console. Um, it does cost 200 lobby and you can't get this off the exchange. You do actually have to farm out the lobby crystals in order to get this um, this this console. It does give you a lot of crit chance, crit severity, and does give you a lot of control ex expertise too. Uh, my number three here is the assembly module from Omega Reputation Tier 1. Um, it does give you some solid crit chance crit severity, which is why a lot of DPS guys are going to really love this console. Um, it does give you some good troll piece as well. It's really that passive floor gen combined with those things is why, as a tank, I really like this console. Uh, I, you're not going to see this on, on a lot of my builds, but you will see, see it on some of my builds. Number two is Bioneural Infusion Circuits. This one's a lobby console that I would say, if you're going to get one lobby console, this is the one that you should, you should be going for. The attack and connect is nice, but this one is just better because it gives you some, it gives you an insane amount of crit severity. It's like the highest crit severity you can get inside of a console. Plus, it also is giving you additional hull capacity and it's actually to be able to survive easier. So, this one is, is a lot more valuable. That's why it's much higher in this category. 
And of course, number one is going to be Trail MD plating. I always seem to talk about this console in some way, shape, or form. You get this from the mission called Ragnarok. Um, it, it's, it's, it's like the last mission of the temporal storyline. Um, and it is a very solid um, console in general. Um, get additional damage resistance rating, um, which, as I've told you a lot of you before in other, other videos, if, if you're not a tank, don't get more than one damage resistance rating console on your ship because um, you're, you're just going to be wasting stats for it because you're not going to really need it too much. Your tanks are the ones that really need it, and even most of your tanks are only going to have one or maybe two damage resistance rating consoles on their ship if there are specific procs alongside those that they really, really want on their ship. Alongside that, you get more hull capacity, shield capacity, and more ox to shield, which if, you know, if you're not a tank, you're going to have auxil about your you have a really high auxiliary and weapon power and so that's that that ox to shield is really going to benefit you substantially that also benefits um science tanks substantially because they're still going to have full aug auxiliary cyber that's really going to boost those power levels even further as well for them too all right so that's it for that category this next category is is power consoles or consoles that will increase your power levels overall so this the, the number four here is a prolonged negation power dynamo um, this is from the Weekend Store, and it, like all other ones in the Weekend Store, it takes three vouchers to get it. Um, I really basically see this as a discount version of the, num the number two in, in this list. Uh, it basically just gives you an addition to all power levels every couple of seconds in combat. Um, you don't really need to use the Activatable. Um, the Activatable is kind of just like if you're like in, in a pinch and need a little bit more damage. But like for tanks, like like if you're if you're going to be a tank, you don't really ever, are not ever going to use this thing. Um, number three is Bounty Hunter's Friend, um, and it's really because there's that weapon power cost reduction. The problem though is the majority of this lobby value is actually coming from the energy damage resistance rating, which this is only really valuable if you're going to have the damage resistance rating as like your one damage resistance rating console for your ship. If, if you're not going to get this console for and, and you want to use this as your one damage resistance ready console for your ship, don't get this console. Like, realistically, you're, you're not going to want this console for that. So it, that, that's why it's this thing is ranked any higher than number three. Number two is the Plasmonic Leech. You y'all will probably have seen this in almost all of my builds that I use. Um, Polaron's basically the exception in which at the high end, I actually won't use Plasmonic Leech because I do have my, the number one that's better than this one. But, but for basically every other energy type, Plasmonic Leech is going to be on my, on my build. For KDF and KDF Romulans, you, you get this from, from the Sea Store T3 ship, the Vandal Destroyer. For everyone else, you get it off the exchange um, through through, um, through lockbox drop stuff that on, on there. It's actually decently cheap. It's no, it's always it's typically less less than two million credits for for everyone on, on Fed and Fed Rom characters, um, usable on, on any ship, and it's really really standard and really good. Um, the armable mention here is going to be the fleet spire warp cores because they also give a power cost reduction and they do allow you to you know have have an additional console for some other survival and, and clicky abilities inside of the game and also because especially with a lot of the stuff that's changed in victory's life um having the full four piece set um for for space isn't necessarily as valuable or needed as it was previously um because I mean, like for instance, like I've mentioned before, that the four-piece Lucari is really strong, but also the three-piece Lucari, whenever you take out the warp core, is still very, very strong. So, um, and the three-piece Lucari is still better than the three-piece Kobali that's missing the warp core. So, um, if if you want to just do a three-piece one with like stuff from missions, and then have a just a, just a warp core in there, and you're not you using Tetrion, um, this is definitely a good warp core to use. My number one, of course, is the Morphogenic Energy Matrix, simply because you have the weapon power cost reduction alongside you're getting lots of extra stuff for your tactical console. It is technically a little bit less Polaron damage overall for your tactical slot for Polaron damage, but you basically have two other Polaron um, universal consoles that are basically two other um, tactical consoles. Um, so you're not really going to be hurting on Polaron damage if you get those other two consoles. The one from the mission is well. Not much mission. Um, the one from from the latest two reputations, there's uh, basically an Omni or a console universal. That's basically another tackle console. Um, 
um, you'll, you'll see that build probably in a couple of weeks from my um, my my Vorgon ship. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a three five ship that will be flying in reverse. And you'll see what I mean in, in that video. And so for section three here, it's going to be the clicky tonk consoles. Um, these these are consoles that they're either going to be taunted or they motivate into attacking you or into attacking themselves. Um, both of which I kind of consider the same category because if they're attacking themselves or attacking you, that means they are not attacking your allies. So I, for, for me, that's really valuable for, for this section. Number four, of course, is hostile acquisition. This is the newest one, the one that replaced the attack and I converted for a lot of my high-end ships, um, just because it has really good accuracy and true expertise. And alongside that, um, it has forceful introspection, or forceful inspection, sorry, which, which is a five second hold, and then a 10 second all damage resistance rating debuff and all damage debuff, which with all this stuff combined means at least the first few seconds after that hold ends, that whoever you attack this with is going to be attacking you thereafter. So if there, there's a really big bad that you don't want your, your, your allies to be attacked from, use this console on it and it's going to be a whole lot easier. Number three is the Enhanced Indoctrination Nanite Dispersal System. Um, this one you get from the Talshar Adapted Battle Cruiser, and you can only use it on, on Talshar ships. But it is still it's, it's, it's still pretty good, at least. Um, so it uh, it so it does an AOE disable and affects up up to five targets, gives them all electrical damage every half second for for um, for five seconds. So it attacks, so it gives that um, electrical damage for um, ten times during this, um, and then it, it um, forces up to five targets. Um, to to, uh, to uh, attack themselves, and and that is very very valuable to have, you know. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically if, if for this you want to use an Atal Shiar starship, so that's that's a little bit limiting because a lot of them aren't really good at like normal tanking. There um, there are a few that are decent at science tanking, but not normal tanking. Number two is the reactive antiproton cascade emitter. This one can be used on any starship. But, but it also um, costs a lot of lobby or buying the ship off, off the exchange in order to get. Um, and since it's not a tier six ship, people are only, only really probably to get this ship if they're wanting to get this console. Um, it doesn't have any passive stats on it because it's a tier five console. Um, but it is actually very, very valuable because it is um, an AOE taunt in which like it, it'll force up to four enemies within five kilometers of you to attack you for 20 seconds. And also, whenever you activate that, you also get an energy damage resistance and shield resistance during during that 20 seconds. And then during the second half of that, um, you also reflect 200, uh, up to 200 200% of the energy damage coming at you um, during that time. This is extremely strong with the reiterative re structural capacitor, which I'll get into later on in, in this video. Basically, you 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 combine that with this thing and you can literally zoom into an area and your allies are, are safe for, for a long time. So um, this is a very high high tier console. It is technically also a survivability console, but I'm not going to include that in the list because I'm trying to be exclusive to having each console only being in, in, in one category that I've been inventing. But the number one here is going to be, of course, the IFF manipulator. Um, this is from the Flight Deck Assault Cruiser Pack Starships. You, you 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 buy any of those starships and you get the console. Um, and they're used on any of those sea store um, ships or their fleet versions. Um, it does give a crit severity bonus to energy weapons, um, which the way these ships are, are designed is basically super ideal for my version of tanking, which is five weapons in the front and three in the back for that 250 degree full arc. Um, that I um, they, that I put a video back on just a few days ago. Uh, feel free to, to look through my channel to find that video. It's I feel like I did, I did a decent job at it. Um, al alongside that, um, it does an AOE confuse and force retarget. So um, like this is like this console to put it simply, it's basically designed as as, as an anti carrier console. Like if you have, you have a carrier that has has a bazillion pets around it, oh. Now that carrier has 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 minus 400 all damage resistance rating, which my tanks don't even get that high in damage resistance rating. So, yeah, you're going into negative resistance here. Whenever you like, like assuming that there's a lot of a lot of allies around that thing you, that you're targeting, 
it's going into negative resistance and it's going to die fast. Like whenever, whenever I, I use this thing, enemies die fast, like really, really fast whenever they have lots of allies around them. So yeah, it is extremely strong. And now for the last section will be the clicky survival consoles. I have a bazillion here because there are a lot inside the game. And as a result, I'm only including the ones I think are noteworthy, which is still going to be a bit. <laughs> um, and that's why this video is going to be so long is because I'm going through all of them. I'm not going to be super specific into a lot because I need to get through this video, but just keep in mind that there are a lot of them. Number three is a simpler cylinder. Um, this is from your faction temporal science vessel. Um, it's useful and used on any starship. It's mainly your science captains that are going to be using this thing. Um, gives you good exotic damage and shield restoration or shield healing. Another way of saying it. Um, the temporal back step is terrible for tanks. So if you're going to be a science tank, do not use this console for survivability. It doesn't work for you, but it is good for science ships. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, if, you, if you want me to discuss this even, even further, I'd be happy to do like a 10-15 minute video, video as to why Temporal Backs is terrible for tanks. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is just to go through a bunch of survival consoles. So there we go. Number 22 is the Metaphysics Solar Capacitor. Um, you get this from the Ferengi Nadi warship. Um, it's useful on other Ferengi starships. Um, it does have good shield healing resistances. It does have a passive um, shield resistance on it too. Um, and then it's, and it's activatable is that it gives you more chill resistance. That's about all there is to it. Um, it's not really a lot, to be honest. So, um, I mean, chill resistance is, is, isn't bad, but it's nice to have chill resistance plus something else, too. Um, it's, it's decent for science, just, but again, it's just the Ferengi stars. Is the, all, all you can use on the Ferengi stars aren't really meant for science stuff, so not really super great for you. All right, number 21 is the Resident Dissipation Matrix. This one's a little bit better because it gives you damage straight as well as um, shield resistance too. Um, it also gives you a 33% bridge after cooldown reduction whenever you're activating this thing. It also gives you a passive shield heal bonus too. Pretty straightforward there. The Brain Star Thing Carrier is how you get this thing and it's available on all Brain Starships. Uh, number 20 is a Blade of Hazard Shielding. Um, you get this one from the tier 6 battle cruiser bundle starships basically the starships that are in the usability are basically the ones that you use to get these things in the first place um, they're a little bit limited in terms of being able to use them um, you get some secondary shields and you also get some expiration healing whenever it ends which is pretty nice most consoles don't do that it's just a constant healing or an instant heal and that's it so it's nice to be able to have a console that's like that it doesn't have passive Stats though, so that's kind of a downside though. Number 19 is the parallel conversion matrix. It's only available on the Guardian Cruisers, and of course, only useful on Guardian Cruisers. Um, it does have pretty strong shield resistance act activation, and also can give you more um, DPS whenever you're getting attacked to be able to basically keep that threat to, um, to stay on you for a while. So that, that is pretty nice. The Guardian Cruiser is not really my favorite in terms of tanks, though, which is why you basically ne never see me you, you using this console. Number 18 is Reflective Shield Amplifier. You will see me use this occasionally when I go with budget builds and use the Voth Bastion, because whenever I, I, I do budget builds for tanking, the Voth Bastion is what I'm going to be using. Um, so you will see me have this uh, console on the Voth Bastion, because that's just what comes with the ship. Um, it has a temporary, well, whenever you activate this thing for up to 20 seconds, um, you have 50%, you, you, you have half of your, um, outgoing damage active. Um, your, um, whenever you, you're, you're attacked, you reflect 100, 100% of the energy damage back to the attackers and you're immune to all damage, um, until you've received, um, 100,000 damage pre-resistances. So this doesn't really last a super long time in, in, in like your advanced and, and elite queues. But if, but if you're just trying to get through normal normal missions inside the game, this console will actually last you a long time. So definitely something, something to think about in terms of why this thing is a very, and also why the Voth Bastion is a very good budget and and just budget in, in, intro tank and ship inside the game. It's usable by all Voth ships, I personally prefer the Voth Bastion. That's why I like to 
like to um, feature that that guy. I don't know why I I have that wrong there. Um, I need to modify that later. Uh, number 17 is Temporal Distress Beacon. Um, you, you obtain this guy from the Nakua de Mars Science Vessel, either from the lobby or through exchange. Um, it's useful on Nakua starships. Um, it does give you some... I could have sworn there's plasma DPS on that. Maybe it was just the um, Sepos that had plasma DPS. I think it was the plasma, I think it was the Sepos that had plasma DPS, that's why I was remembering that. Um, it also, also have the, has a clickable time slip ability. Uh, but yeah, De it's, it's a decent one too. Number 16 is Subspace Wake Generator. Um, you get this from the Tier 5 Rising Corvette, um, either through the summer event a while ago or through the Phoenix Lockbox uh, for an ultra rare drop. Use on Rising Starships. It does give you a self speed boost and it, it gives you a slow to enemies in the rear, which makes this one makes the Rising Corvette one of the two escorts that I am willing to tank with. It's that one and the tier six Alachi Escort is the ones that I really like for tanking. The Alachi one has has super high stats to begin with. The Renzo Corvette has bonus defense, so the dodge stuff easier plus this guy. Number 15 is going to be one that you'll actually see on, on a lot of really high-end science science um, builds inside the game. Um, because it has control and drain expertise, plus it's a survival console too. Because um, you um, summon two duplicates. Um, think of like warp shadows. Whenever you you, you think that that's a step, you're not you're not going into cloak. It's just you get two more duplicates of, of yourself. Plus, you get an additional 100 damage resistance resistance rating um, whenever you activate this thing. It's also useful on, on any starship, um, but you do have to get your faction temporal destroyer in order to get the console. That is the one downside to it, um, and because of how popular this this console is with with, with the science build community inside the game. Um, this, this, the, the temporal destroyers are, are pretty expensive on, on the exchange. Number 14 is adaptive emergency systems, which, which you get from the engineering version of, of the tier six flagships on, in the C store. And they're usable by all of your faction flagships. Um, it is a decent damage resistance rating console. Uh, so that's something to think about. Um, and you get a lot of, um, DPS and bonus damage resistance whenever you activate this thing. And it's and it's um, increased even more whenever you're at lower hole. Because of this, you will often see a lot of your super high end, like trying to get as much DPS as possible, um, um, scimitars inside the game, trying to get get to low health without dying. Uh, with with a force with with with, with, with four piece flagship technologies things to be able to get to get to get that lower health uh, requirement for it. I don't agree with that. I'm I'm a tank. I like to have a high health as much as possible. That's not really my my cup of tea, but it's definitely one that that is there for you if if you want to want to consider that type of play style. Number thirteen, there's a generative integrity field. This one used to be a lot higher in my personal um, list, but with with different things that happen with the expansion of sixty to sixty five for the level cap, this one has fallen much lower in 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 my general tier list of types of things in general. Um, you get this from the Kabali Samsar Cruiser, um, usable on any starship, and it's just an extremely strong instant heal that, um, assuming that you have a couple of other holy healing enhancements on, on your ship and in your skill tree, even if you have 100,000 hull, this will basically bring you from zero hull to 100 hull, 100 hull. So that is that is that, and that's why a lot of people like this console a lot, is because whenever you use this thing, it'll basically bring you up to full as long as you have hull healing stuff on your ship. Number 12 is the Enhanced Inertial Dampener Field. Um, this one is, I would say, one of the best survival consoles for your escort captains. You ever want to go with, like, you know, your, your speedy little guy moving around. Like, even though it, you, you can use it on Herogen ships, you're going to use it on pilot ships, Raptors, Raiders, and Escorts, which, for those of you who are not familiar with the Klingon faction, Raptors are basically just the Klingon versions of escorts. So it's basically that general category is what this um, console is uh, is allowed to be put on. Um, it, it's it's an instant movement, um, like in in, in, uh, in like the opposite direction. It also gives you a, a, an extra 100% defense. And um, after two seconds, basically after after you do the maneuver, um, you you get a, an additional 10% damage and 
defense for, the, for that time. And, and it has, has a three charge system that recharges once every, every minute. That will search, it does one charge every minute. So if, you're, if you need to in a pinch, you, you can use three charges super quick, but just then you, know, you have to wait a couple minutes for the charge back up fully. All right, so number number 11 is the Ward Repair Ship. Another reason why the VOTs stuff at the high end, even with tier five ships, are actually really, really strong. In, in PvE, not, not PvP, but in PvE, they're actually pretty strong. You get this from the Ultra Rare Phoenix Lockbox Drop, the Voth Bulk Work Dreadnought Cruiser. Um, it's usable on all VOTs ships. This is a literal self-res console. Like for those of you, you that got a Neil and Exel from the from the Dyson reputation, like he has a he has a self-res ability. As um, the 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 androids also do as well. Hopefully they add an Android um, an ability to have an Android captain inside the game. But until then, um, we're at least able to have a self-res console on on our ship. Which I'm which I'm this is also also part of the um, Voth Battle Cloak um, three console group. And so you got, like find this with the other one and plus the third science the third one you get from, from the science ship. I don't have in this list, but it is kind of a survival console. Those three combined will give you the Voth Battle Cloak, which is also pretty good. But yeah, it gives you full hull and shield hit points after you die. Well, after you die, you click the ability for this, and then boom, you immediately come back with full hit points, um, full shields, and then and then additional 100 weapon shield engine and auxiliary power from your base power levels. And so that is extremely high plus you also have um plus plus your all shield resistance is at 75 percent keep in mind that your shields already have a base 75 percent against torpedoes well connect torpedoes anyway so the fact that you have that basically means everything is, is at that 75 percent resistance for shields whenever you whenever you come back it's basically so that you can't just immediately self-res and then immediately get blown up again it, it's trying to give you a chance to like try to get back into the fight which I, th which I think is is fair and actually really nice in PVE. In PVP, I'm pretty sure this actually will count as 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 a death, even if you use the color, the color parachute afterwards, because like the counts for for kills don't go backwards. So it's not good in PVP, but it is good in PVE. Number ten is the Dominion Defense Screen. This is what I would say is the best of well your um of your escort. Um, survival consoles inside the game because of the Dominion defense screen that gives you basically um, invincible shields. It's not fully invincible shields, but it's pretty close. Um, and if you get this, the three step bonus, um, then the firing, we firing weapons isn't going to reduce the duration, so you'll be able to get the full 20 seconds off of it. You unfortunately have to get an RD promotion pack starship in order to get this console, which, which unfortunately are the billion um, credit starships on, on the exchange. Either from the Gemini Re Recon ship or this Gemini Strike ship. The Recon ship is is normally a, a couple hundred million cheaper than the, than the Strike ship on, on average on on the exchange. So if if you really don't care as much about the seating and you just want the ship and the console, the Recon ship is going to be the cheaper option. It's usable on all Gemini Strike ships, but come on, the Recon and Strike ships are, are obviously the best ones. So. Um, it does give you a lot of good crit chance crit severity passively and also that, that shield resistance. So it is a very good, good and strong console. Number nine for my list is the Temporal Shielding Matrix. Um, you tame it from the Crystal Consortium um, from the Zal Heavy Cruiser. And it's usable on the Neidoran, Krenum, and Zal Starships. Uh, for general strengths, it has passive shield regen, damage resistance rate increase. And then um, in addition to that, um, attackers once every every five seconds because um, you, you get immune every five seconds after you get debuffed by this but um, you get additional recharge stuff to all of, all of your abilities so that even if you're about to do something boom everything has an additional two second re recharge on it because of the, because of, of, of this guy whenever whenever you're going which which is pretty nice whenever, whenever you're trying to survive number eight is the sympathetic Fermion transceiver I always just call this Fermion Field because it doesn't have a passive, and that's what the activatable is. Um, you get this from the tier, tier five multi-mission surveillance explorers, and you're able to use it on all Federation multi-mission explorers, which is pretty nice. Um, it has um, pretty good AOE hull and shield healing, as well as as it increases your exotic particle generator for for the duration. 
And this is versus number seven, which is shared process integration. This one is not on the Star Trek Online Wiki. So I unfortunately had to get a really low quality um, image of what the console kind of looks like. And it's like stuff here. I also had to cut off part at the bottom because I have extra stuff in my traits that gives all my healing extra bonus stuff for my ship. You obtain this on the exchange or lockbox. This is around about one to two million energy credits on, on the exchange. You can use it on, on any ship. And it's an AOE heal and shield, shield, shield healing over, over time, as well as a decent increase to damage resistance, resistance rating for the 15 seconds. And additional 84 is not something to, to snuff at. So uh, especially if, if you're a tank and you and you see a lot of guys like starting to like get a lot of uh, starting to get lower hole and stuff, go close to them, activate this thing, and they'll get a lot of increased damage resistance rating during that for that duration, and help help keep them alive a little bit more. Number six is one you probably haven't seen me use before, um, and it's called the reiterative structural capacitor. Um, this is the one you get from the weekend store. It is definitely one of the strongest survival consoles in the entire game, and because it's from the weekend store. Assuming that you happen to be in game when the weekend event type of things are going on throughout the year, you can easily get one of the strongest consoles in the entire game without actually having to pay any money at all for it. You can use it on any starship, and, and it does a lot of AoE healing based upon the damage that, you, that you're receiving for the duration. Basically, for simple terms, think of this as reverse shield polarity, except it's for your hull instead of your shields. Um, in theory, this, this can give you the highest healing of any console inside the game um but in most in most circumstances that i've ever experimented with this um it doesn't really perform that well however if you combine this with the re reactive antiproton cascade emitter then you can approach that having better healing than the other stuff in in this um tier list but you have to but you have to combine them together in order to really do that which I personally like to, you know, do one survival console, then another survival console, and I have to use multiple at the same time, because then there's a lot more gaps in which, in which the enemies can actually kill you. Uh, my number five is a Blade of Generator, which it shouldn't be a surprise that this is on the list. Um, this is from the Tier 5 Long Range Science Vessel Retrofit for the Federation, and it's usable on all Federation Long Science Vessels, both the regular ones for the Sea Store, as well as the, one, as well as the Fleet versions too. It is the strongest bonus damage resistance rating console in the entire game. Um, just for a little bit of a recap, for those of you that don't understand damage resistance rating, a norm, normal damage resistance rating has a cap of 75%. Bonus damage resistance rating, or as, as it's said in here, all damage bonus resistance, uh, has, has, has a cap at 100% resistance. And... Um, that that cap for both is around about like 1150 for it and so the 900 here means that whenever you have even some basic stuff on your ship by default i'm always at over 90 percent resistance on everything whenever i activate this console i've actually squeaked it to around like 97 98 percent when i when i've used other traits and like honor dead and stuff um you could you become virtually in invincible during this thing being on and even though it does have weapons and shields offline during, for the duration you basically use this whenever you're you're in a dire situation anyway whenever your shields are probably gone anyway and since this is a science vessel you probably are using torpedoes mainly anyway so that doesn't matter either so um it actually is a super good uh survival console unfortunately it can only be used by federation long range science vessels and so klingons are kind of out of luck for this console um the romulans have a different version that's a little well, it's, it's a lot more usable for, for Romulans, and it's called the Molecular Phase Inversion Field. It's a little bit less damage resistance rating, but you still have your shields, and your shield resistance goes up to 90%. And you also get an additional 100% defense while, while this thing's going on, which is pretty nice. Uh, it's used on a ton more ships. As I said, it's basically the Romulan version of the Ablative Generator. Um, and yeah, and it's, it's for this reason why Romulan science ships can actually tank. Uh, you get this from the tier, tier 4 Sea Store version of the Dorothy Warbird Battle Cruiser. So, yeah, it is a pretty solid console. All right, so the number three is one that you'll see everyone at the high, D, high end probably using. 
and it's called the Dynamic Power Redistributor Module, or the DPRM console, as what I and a lot of people uh, will shorten and refer this to. For, for KDF and Romulan, faction, or Romulan characters of, of either allegiance, can get this off the exchange through, the, through their corresponding cross-faction console pack. There's one for KDF characters as well as one separately for Romulan characters. Um, the Federation version of the cross-faction console pack doesn't have this because Federation has the prototype Dreadnought Cruiser. So the Federation characters have to buy that tier 6 cruiser in order to get this console, which is a bit unfortunate, but just the way it is. Um, it has a, it has really high hull healing on activation, as well as gives you some bonus damage resistance rating on, on activation, which is pretty nice. And it's also, in my opinion, the best damage resistance rating survivability console inside of the game, or a the best survival console that has damage resistance rating on it in, in its passive and active stats. Also, I've noticed that um, the, the, the two-piece set, if you have DPRM plus something else in, in the set, like whatever's cheap for your faction, um, you get an additional amp of damage to phasers, disruptors, and plasma energy weapons as well. My number two is the protomatter field projector. Um, you get this from the Lucari Hukun Science Vessel, either through the, that old anniversary event or through the Phoenix Lockbox, um, the epic drop. If you get an epic um, drop for your Phoenix Lockbox and you're curious about what ship to get, if you don't have this ship, get this ship. It has the this is um, this is one of the absolute best survivability consoles in the entire game. It has super super high shield and hull regeneration uh, whenever you're activating this thing. Um, basically, for me as a tank, whenever I, I activate this thing, I don't die. Like because when you know you have, you have additional stuff packed with hull and shield re, um, restoration or hull and shield healing. When after this, after this console, you you are not going to die for the like 20 seconds that this thing's going to be active. So, as we see, another 20 seconds of basically in, in invulnerability, which is pretty nice to have on a ship too. Um, because of that, it's it's in my opinion the best tanking survivability console. But as you you can see in this, we're only at number two. And so, what is number one? It is the obfuscation screen. You all have seen me use this before. Um, and, and, and you get this from the Lobby Consortium or the Exchange. Um, for KDF and KDF um, Romulan Captains, um, um, we'll be able to buy the console for 400, 150 Lobby. They won't be able to access the ship because that's specific to Federation and Federation Romulan characters. Um, and, yeah, and that's 900 Lobby and you get the Walker Light Exploration Cruiser. The Walker Cruiser, ironically, is actually decently cheap on the Exchange, but the console is like almost non-existent there. And so, for me, that's really weird because, in my opinion, it's the best rubber console in the entire game. It's got good accuracy and defense. It's got decent hull regeneration on it. Um, it's got engineering readiness. Plus, it's got an untargetable, unkillable, activatable on it. Now, true, you you can't move while while the, while it's active. But if you've exhausted all other options and you're about to die, or you're about to get shot by something that you know is is supposed to one shot you inside the game, boom. Activate the console, you're not going to die. Pretty simple. Um, whenever I, I've used this, um, I'll typically be at full hull and about half shields um, with just being five seconds in it. So um, that's just something for you all to think about. Um, if you really wanted the full shields, then you, you probably need to wait the full like 10 or 20 seconds for it to fully go. Um, it's a lot more whole regeneration than shield regeneration for this. But that's a suggestion from, from my experience. And then whenever you come, come, come back into the fight, you have an additional 120% bonus all damage. It's not all damage, it's bonus all damage. So it's, it's, it's that category two, um, which will allow you to get the threat back on you for um, for tanking a little bit easier. But even if you're not going to tank, having that bonus all damage is, is pretty nice too. Because that's all damage, not, not, not all weapon damage. So it's going to affect science abilities as well as normal weapons. So for instead of a TLDW, I decided to, because a TLDW wouldn't make sense for this video really. Um, so instead I wanted to just put on like, here's an example of, of, of like a budget, like here's the survival consoles that I, that I, I would use for a budget beam tank. For power consoles, because, because you typically want two power consoles of some fashion. Um, or a power console plus a trait that, that lowers power cost. Um, 
I chose the Fleet Spire Warp Core combined with the Prologue to Engage the Power Dynamo because those ones don't really cost you anything. Uh, that much one's just from the Fleet, and another one is from the, with the, a weekend event, so it's decently easy to get versus the other ones. Uh, for passive consoles, I chose Trill MD Plating from the Ragnarok mission, combined with Assimilate Module and Sustained Radiant Field from, from Reputation Tier 1. And since they're, since they're both Tier 1, they're also fairly easy to get as well. Like you do whatever reputation it is, you do that the daily mission twice, and then you save up the marks to get the console. It's really, really easy to get it. I forge you there isn't a taunt console that's that's really accessible. Um, shared process integration, not shared process integration, um, hostile acquisition, sorry. Hostile acquisition is, is the easiest one. Um, you you have to, you, know, you get that one off off the exchange. It's actually decently cheap, but it's technically outside of what I would call budget because you actually have to go to the exchange and actually buy it. So it also means whenever Age of Discovery comes out, that will probably get expensive as as well. So if if you're a tank or a PvP player, buy that console while it's cheap. I'm just gonna say it that way. Uh, for Clickcase Forever consoles, obviously the only one that's actually good in there that you can actually access easily is the Reiterative Structural Capacitor. Yeah, that's basically it for, for the budget build stuff. Um, feel free to comment on anything that you think should have been on the list or should have been higher on, on the list in your opinion. Um, yeah, feel free to disagree, send me emails, hate mail, whatever you want to do, and just leave, leave comments um, in, in the bottom. And yeah, um, feel free to like and, and subscribe as well if you ever really like the content of, of this channel. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you all for watching, and yeah, I will see you um, later on this week.